Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are starting our tomato seeds, 26 varieties. This is what we're looking at, 26 beautiful types of tomatoes here. And why on earth am I planting 26 varieties? I have no idea, other than the fact that it seems like a good idea right now. It looks like it does outside. Kind of overcast gray, nothing's growing yet. I might regret it later on this season. Some of the seeds I have here today are odd varieties that I don't see normally offered as a plant down at a garden center. And that's one of the big benefits of starting some of your plants from seed if you wanna try some varieties that are just unique, things that you don't see normally. Some of these that I'm starting today are normal, like beefsteak and big boy. You see those tomato varieties offered like very commonly. And I could pick those up down at the garden center, but I figured I may as well just grow all the different varieties I have on hand. There will be a few that I do pick up though later on, like pineapple, heirloom tomatoes are so wonderful and I don't have the seeds for those, as well as sun sugar cherries, uh, sweet olives are amazing. Um, what other ones? Super fantastic and celebrities are real good ones as well. I wanna run through some tomato planting basics real quick before I show you all the varieties that we're gonna be planting and I'm excited to show you because look at that. Orange accordion, isn't that the coolest looking tomato? That just looks like it tastes amazing and I hope I get one that big. But see, that's one of the benefits of starting your things from seed. You can try out things that, I don't think I've ever seen this plant offered at a garden center. So anyway, it opens up your options. Let's start with when you should be planting your tomato seeds. I think you wanna shoot from somewhere between five to eight weeks before your average last frost date. And I see even on some of these packets, this one says six to 10 weeks. Actually, all of the Baker Creek ones do. Uh, there are some that I got in clear plastic bags that say six to eight weeks. Uh, the Proven Winners packets say five to seven weeks. I think anywhere between five to eight week weeks for us is usually pretty good. If you're planting on the eight week side of things, you may have to pot them up one time before you actually have a chance to plant them out in the ground. So like right now we're between seven and eight weeks. I might have to pot mine up. It just kind of depends on how things are going out here, what the temperatures are like and so on. In terms of actually planting the seeds, it's all pretty standard. I use our seed starting mix right here. We plant the seeds a quarter of an inch deep. I'm going to be putting these on a heat mat, which is not 100% necessary. I did not start these on a heat mat. They're just inside in normal inside temperatures right around 70. Um, but if you can start them on a mat that's about 75 to 85 degrees, you'll have really fast germination. And then once they've all germinated, they'll move off the heat mat and then they'll grow on in here where it maintains about anywhere between 60 and 70 degrees typically, unless it heats up during the day. I also use a humidity dome and that's not 100% necessary either, but I tend to like to use it while they're germinating. Until the whole flat's germinated, it helps me with moisture levels. We're so dry here that if I uh, stretch my watering out too far or if I accidentally miss a day, I could lose my crop if my seed trays dry out. So humidity domes really, really help with that in the beginning stages. And then once they've germinated, I don't use them anymore. And last are the different types of tomatoes that you can plant, which can make a difference depending on what kind of space you have when you want to be harvesting them if you are harvesting them to can you may want a big crop all at the same time as opposed to having them fruit through the whole season uh, so you'll see the words indeterminate determinate and semi-determinate on tags or on your seed packets indeterminate tomatoes are types that will flower and set fruit all through the whole season so you'll get a nice consistent crop some of them will bear heavier you know middle like beginning to middle part of the season and then will continue to fruit through the end but maybe not quite as heavy they're also a type that you need to trellis. You need to ha either have a cage or a um, support of some kind because they are robust, vigorous growers and they will keep growing vertically as long as you keep trellising them up. They're also a type you may want to consider pruning. We've done pruning videos before. That will help the plant send energy into a lot of fruit production. It'll also um, help keep the plant healthy because you're pruning out some of that foliar growth and it'll help with airflow and light getting to all the plant. It's a really good practice to keep up on. I'm horrible at doing that. I'm pretty good in the beginning of the season. And then towards the end, especially when I'm planting this many varieties, I kind of fall off sometimes keeping up on it, but it's a good idea. Determinate tomatoes, they are shorter growing. They grow to a determined size and then they stop. So they're more compact. Oftentimes you'll see on a tag, if you don't see the word determinate, you'll see like compact dwarf bush type containers. That all means that they are gonna stay a specific size. Um, also, they usually flower and set their fruit within a certain window. So they're a really good type to, you know, make sure you have a big crop all at once so that you can 
can or preserve if you're wanting to do that. And then you'll find semi-determinate varieties, which kind of fall somewhere in between. You'll usually get the in indeterminate type flowering and fruit set, so it'll set through the whole season, but with the smaller statured plant, uh, which oftentimes that's a really highly desired type because those big tomatoes can be kind of a beast. Oh, real quick, I wanted to run through the differences between heirloom versus hybrid versus open pollinated. So tomatoes are self-pollinating plants and typically they don't have a problem cross-pollinating because when they're in bloom stage, and I'll try to get a close-up picture of this, when they're in bloom stage, each flower has both male and female parts and typically they pollinate while the flower is still kind of closed. But sometimes you'll get a bee that will get some pollen from one plant and, and make it to another plant and you will get some cross pollination, but the chances are fairly slim. So with your heirloom varieties, those are typically varieties that have been handed down from generation to generation. They've been around for a really long time and they are all open pollinated, which means that you can gather the seeds from an heirloom type tomato and you can plant them the next year and you're most likely gonna get the same variety that you planted the year before. Um, open pollinated varieties are mean the same thing in terms of you can gather seeds and plant them the next year. Not all open pollinated varieties though are heirloom, but all heirloom varieties are open pollinated as far as I know. And then you have your hybrids, which are a cross between two different parent plants to get something specific. Usually you're trying to gather up the good genetics from two different types of tomatoes. You're trying to combine them into one variety. When you gather seeds from that type of tomato and you plant them the next year, you might get one of the parent plants. You might get some weird off variety. Um, so it's not typically one that you wanna gather seeds from, from year to year. So if that's something that you're trying to do, you wanna look for open pollinated or heirloom varieties. I hope all of that was not confusing. So we are gonna go through all the varieties I have sitting here which I'm super excited about. All right, I think I want a chair for this part. So I have them laid out here all alphabetically. Let me just run through each variety quick and then we'll go more into detail. So in total, we have Beefsteak, Bellini, Big Boy, Black Beauty, Black Crim, Black Prince, Black Strawberry, Blue Cream Berries, Bosque Blue Bumblebee, Campari, Cherry Falls, Castelludo, Genovese, Dr. Weichies, is that how you say it? Or doc whatever, Dr. Weichies Yellow, Evil Olive, Good Hearted, Garden Gem, Garden Treasure, Green Zebra, which I have not had good luck with in the past. I'm gonna try it one more time. Hill Marmond, Husky Cherry, Orange Accordion, Patio Sunshine, Purple Rain, Sausage, Spoon, and Sweet Aperitif. Let's start with the first one. This is an heirloom called Beefsteak. This is a favorite in our area. Huge fruit, usually between a half and one full pound, really meaty. I love heirloom tomatoes like this uh, because they usually have a very high, like, uh, I don't, I hate the word flesh but flesh versus like seeds and juice. It's just a very meaty tomato that way. Um, so when I'm cutting into it and putting it on a plate to eat fresh, I don't have like juice and seeds running everywhere. I get a lot of tomato. I love to use this for like caprese salad um, where you're putting mozzarella and basil. So, oh, that's making my mouth water. So good, I can't wait to eat these. They are an indeterminate type, so they require a cage or a trellis of some kind to support them as they grow. Uh, they mature in typically like 80 to 100 days. This packet says 78 days. And what that means is from the moment you set the plant out or plant the plant in the ground, not from the moment you plant the seed. So we're gonna start seeds today. When we plant them outside in the garden, then it'll be 78 or 80 days to 100 days for the fruit to start to mature. On these larger, heirloom type tomatoes, it usually takes a fairly long growing season to get them to mature and produce quite a lot. For shorter areas, there are some uh, varieties, let's see, I think it's like Black Prince um, that is an heirloom that matures a lot quicker or Black Beauty, I don't know, we'll go over it. Um, anyway, you want a long growing season for a lot of these big size heirlooms. The next one is Bellini, which I've never grown before. Uh, so this one is a large cocktail type tomato. So nice round tomatoes, bright orange, uh, supposedly have really sweet, low acid fruit. So I'm really excited to taste these and they're resistant to cracking. Cracking in tomatoes usually forms where the stem attaches to the tomato. You'll see little cracks form down the side. Usually a water issue if you have them in an inconsistent watering sort of situation where they're being kept dry for too long and then you get a deluge of rain and then they're dry again. That constant like ebb and flow of water or a huge influx of water will maybe 
cause the cracking to happen. We have ours typically set up on a drip system, not typically, always set up on a drip system here in our garden. So they get very consistent water. We do deal with a little bit of cracking. I think some varieties are more prone to it than others, but it's not something we usually deal with because it's so consistent. I don't know if I said these are indeterminate, so do need to be supported as they grow. Next, we have Big Boy, which is an 80 day maturity tomato, a large slicer type. And this is one of those indeterminate types that bears very heavily in the middle of the season and it will continue to bear throughout the rest, but it's not quite as much as that first big influx of fruit. These can produce, if you have a 10 week or more season, they can produce over 100 pounds per plant, which is amazing. And these are also resistant to cracking. We've got another indeterminate type here called Black Beauty. This is, they say, the world's darkest tomato. So they get a black skin, like a kind of blue-black skin in most situations. And then the interior of the flesh of the tomato is really dark red. Uh, I actually grew these last year. We tried the Florida weave method, which we may try again at some point, but kind of failed at that because I had them exposed to too much wind and the elements, and they need to be a little bit more protected when you are pruning them so heavily, which is what the Florida weave method is all about. I did get a few tomatoes off of this plant though, and they were really delicious. 80 day maturity on this one. Next, Black Crim here is another indeterminate 70 to 90 day maturity on this one. And it's got like medium to large size fruit that are kind of a purple red, sometimes with a little bit of green coloration toward the top, like the shoulders of the tomato where it starts to kind of curve up toward the stem. They're really pretty and they are very, very tasty. Black Prince is the one, the heirloom type that you can get away with in a shorter growing season. Um, the tomatoes will start to ripen two months after planting your plant out. So that's 60 days, roughly. Um, if you have a three month season, you can get up to 30 pounds produce, 30 pounds of tomatoes off of one plant. They are indeterminate and are a dark red, kind of pear-shaped almost fruit. Most of them are round, but some of them can have a little bit of a pear shape to them. I'm excited for this next one. This is called black strawberry. It is a an indeterminate 60 day maturity, one ounce fruits that have um, different coloring like plum and red. The descriptions get me every time. It says, the one ounce fruit is marbled blue, scarlet, and gold. A bowl full resembles a luminous bunch of gems. And the flavor is decadent and indulgent with perfect sweet and tart balanced flavor. Extremely productive early, obvious choice for gardeners and market farmers. I wonder who comes up with all these descriptions. I love them. This next one is a new one to me as well. It's called Blue Cream Berries. So they are an indeterminate cherry type tomato that are supposedly very, very sweet and really productive, like very prolific. You'll get a ton of fruit from them. And they're cream cherry tomatoes with splashes of blue. I got another one that's new to me that's similar to the Blue Cream Berries, but it's called Bosque Blue Bumblebee. And these fruit, these tomatoes can be upwards of two ounces. So they're a little bit bigger than I think the Blue Cream Berries are. They say that they are are delectable, perfect for snacking, 75 day maturity, indeterminate. But it'll be interesting to kind of put some of these up against each other and determine flavors, which ones we should maybe grow going forward, which ones we can phase out. Next is a Campari tomato, which is one of my favorites to buy in the grocery store. If I'm buying a tomato, I will buy cherry tomatoes and or Campari tomatoes because they typically always have a fairly good flavor even off season. Um, it's tough to buy tomatoes off season when you're used to growing them and the flavor when you grow them in your own garden is just, you can't compare anything to it. Um, but they are a 70, yeah, 70 to 90 day usually maturity. They're really sweet, low in acid, and they're very consistently flavored. Next we have Cherry Falls, which I have grown before. Uh, they produce, they're cherry tomatoes. They're good for, well, Cherry Falls are good for like a cascading type element out of a hanging basket one and a half inch fruit, really sweet. I kind of wanted to plant them up next to the good hearted, which I have going here. The good hearted are so incredibly good. And it's been a couple years since I've grown the cherry falls. I thought I would grow both of them and try them together. Next one, I'm not 100% sure I pronounce it right, but Costiludo Genovese really interesting looking tomato. Uh, they've got kind of a flattened appearance with heavy ribbing around the outside. Uh, they're 70 to 80 day maturity, which I feel like for an heirloom is a pretty good, it's like slightly on the early side. And I guess this is a really popular choice of chefs with really good flavor. Excited about that. I'm excited about all these. 
I wonder how many times I've said the word excited today already. Next is Dr. White Cheese Yellow, which I've never grown before or tasted before. It says that they have a smooth texture with a very tropical taste, which is intriguing to me. And these can reach upwards of one pound each. So huge tomatoes. Uh, they're indeterminate uh, an 80 day. Next we have Evil Olive, which I have some of these plants going right now. I started them right alongside the other um, tomatoes that I was experimenting with this winter. But these are an interesting type. The tomatoes are uh, like two ounce size and they're more crunchy. So you can grow these as kind of like a tomatillo type and use them in salsas and things like that. They start off in olive green color and as they mature, they get kind of some uh, red streaking down the fruit. There, and there's kind of like red in the interior too. One of you guys sent these to me and I was really excited to just give them a try. And they produce really long trusses of fruit as well, which I thought would be pretty for flower arrangements. See, I don't grow tomatoes just to eat them. We're gonna be giving a lot of tomatoes away this year, but I also like to use a stem or two in an arrangement here and there. Next, we have the three Proven Winners tomatoes that I have grown for several years. We have the Good Hearted, which are the ones I've started here. They are a determinant type tomato that stay really small, like 15 to 18 inches tall, 12 inches wide. Uh, they produce so many tomatoes. In fact, I think I have some pictures of uh, one of them I had in a raised bed that was so loaded you could almost not see any, any leaves because of how many fruit that this plant set. And when you cut into the fruit and lay them kind of open, they have a heart shape to them. So that must be where the name came from. And then there is Garden Gem, which has been one of my favorite flavored tomatoes over the past few years. Both the Garden Gem and Garden Treasure have more of an heirloom type taste to them, uh, rather than like a regular slicer type tomato. But the gems here are semi-determinate. So they will produce through the whole season, but they stay a little bit more manageable in size and they're kind of shaped like aroma, but they're really juicy. I don't get the mealiness that sometimes you get from aroma. The flavor is so, so good. And then we have garden treasures, which are an indeterminate type. So they do need support. They produce massive, massive slicing tomatoes. I have a picture, I think, from last season where like one fit, like rested in my hand. It filled up my entire hand. It was so big. Then we have the green zebra, which is an heirloom type. I have grown these not from seed, but from plant for the last three years, maybe. Maybe it's maybe I skipped last year, I can't remember, but every year these have not produced very well for me. I get very few fruit. They don't seem to ripen in time. And I thought, well, maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'm gonna try one more time from seed this time just to see what happens, to see if there's any difference. Maybe there won't be, uh, but they're such a neat green tomato, like dark green with a little chartreuse, a little bit of kind of golden, not yellow, maybe you could say yellow toward the top. It's just, they're very pretty. And I think they'd be very pretty to use in a tomato salad along with some red and purp maybe the black beauty just to have a mix of color. So that's why I'm trying again. Then we have Hill Marmond, which is a French heirloom tomato, huge fruit, really meaty. I'm not sure that the, uh, let's see, 67 day. That was something that intrigued me because that's a lot less maturity days than a lot of the other heirlooms. So we'll see what happens there. And these are an indeterminate. Then we've got Husky Cherry, which is a 65 day semi-determinate cherry tomato. I planted these last year. I did get some fruit off of them, even though I put them in the uh, Florida weave section of tomatoes that I was growing, still got some fruit and they were really sweet, really good. So we're gonna try this again. Then the Orange Accordion. So these are an 80 day. The tomatoes can get upwards of 20 ounces per tomato. Really interesting shape, very deeply ribbed. Uh, they're supposed to be very uh, sweet tomatoes and very meaty, not a ton of juice inside. So this is gonna be fun. They say they're good for stuffing too. I've never had a stuffed tomato before. What do you stuff them with? Maybe we should try that. And then we have a yellow cherry tomato called Patio Sunshine that I've never grown before. It is a determinate type. It stays small. So, you know, like a 15 to 18 inches tall again, 12 inches wide. It can produce over a hundred fruit, a hundred one inch cherry tomatoes off of one plant. That's a ton of tomatoes. <laughs> these also ripen in 45 days. So we should be getting some tomatoes fairly early from these. Then we've got a really interesting heirloom called Purple Rain. This is a determinate heirloom tomato, which you don't see all that often. Most of the other ones that get really big, they're indeterminate plants that get massive. This one stays about three foot tall. You get tomatoes that range from six to 12 ounces that are really good for fresh eating um, and you know slicing type, but they're also really good for sauce apparently, which I thought is so 
it's so great to have this type of tomato that will stay tidy and small, that will produce a ton of tomatoes all within kind of the same uh, time frame. Uh, and if you're wanting to can sauce and things, this might be a really fun variety to have. And they look like they are kind of like on the purple side of red with a little bit of green on the shoulders. They look tasty. And then I have a variety called sausage, which one of you guys sent out to us. And I did Google what these look like. They can grow upwards of six inches long. So they're like a long slender tomato. They're kind of weird looking. <laughs> I'm excited to see them. And they're, they're really good for things like ketchup sauce, canning, paste, puree, uh, which I don't have any other varieties like that. I don't have any like traditional Romas or San Marzanos or anything like that yet. I might get those in plants later, but this is gonna be a fun one to try. And then we have an indeterminate called spoon, which are micro tomatoes. They're kind of like, I've grown the red currant before, but I guess that these, the fruit on these are even a little bit smaller and they're a favorite of kids, which I thought would be perfect. If they could go along and pick these tiny little tomatoes and just get a little taste for them, uh, that might be a really fun way uh, to just get them into the whole thing. You know, Benjamin likes to help grow all of these things, but he doesn't always want to, you know, bite into a huge massive tomato plant. So if you kind of bring it down to their level, to their size, it can kind of make it a little bit more fun. I also thought this would be a really great one for arranging because they make really long trusses of fruit. So really pretty draping element to an arrangement. And this last one is called sweet aperitif. One of you guys sent this variety out to us. I just love getting seeds because most of the time they're seeds that you guys have tried and love and you want us to try. This one has an interesting uh, description. So it, it says that the flavor is really unique, really wonderful, sweet, with uh, almost like complex wine taste, but also with a little bit of a tropical vibe. I can't even imagine what that would taste like, but they're small fruit indeterminate, really vigorous, pro prolific plant, and they have a really thin skin, but they're still crack resistant, even though their skin is so thin. Should be interesting. Okay, guys, those are all the tomatoes that we're gonna plant today. I'm gonna go ahead and plant two of our pots, which I'm using these pots right here. Uh, these are the seed starting pots that are compostable from Proven Winners right here. And that's what I have the good hearted tomatoes in right there. Anyway, I have 52 pots, so I'm gonna plant two pots of each one of these varieties. I'm only gonna keep one plant. So I'll select the plant that I wanna keep for our garden and then I'm gonna give the rest of the plants away in the end. Uh, so one of my trays has 32 pots, which means this one has 20 pots. I'm gonna pre-moisten my seed starting mix. We'll plant all the seeds a quarter of an inch deep. I top everything with vermiculite, which is totally unnecessary to do, but I like to do it because it helps with algae growth and also, which can be an, a thing when you use a humidity dome. Sometimes you'll see a little bit of algae forming, not typically here. Most of all, it helps with uh, moisture control for me. Uh, it helps uh, to where I don't have to be so um, on it with watering all of the time. Okay, let's plant. planted sitting on the heat mat ready to be domed. I've got their dome sitting right here and that is a thing of beauty. Oh, I am so looking forward to seeing how all of these do. 
for all of the new tomato seeds that I had for this year, I used two seeds, two to three seeds per cell. Uh, tomato seeds usually last somewhere between, I think it's four and six years. They may last longer than that, but your germination rate just goes down every year. Every year that you keep them on hand, and some of mine I've had for quite a long time. So in some of the cells, I used like six, seven, eight seeds on some of those really old varieties. That way, I kind of ensure that I'm gonna have at least one or two come up, and then I'll thin further from there. So these will just sit here with their domes on, on the heat mat until we have all of them germinate. Once that happens, we'll take the domes off, we'll remove them from the heat mats, and they will just hang out in here and grow on. And once they get up and go in a little bit, I do start fertilizing with like a liquid grow fertilizer. I think I've showed it to you before. I don't know if I have any out here. I don't think I do. Maybe we can pop a picture of it up on the screen. I usually start with half strength for a couple of weeks, and then I kick it up to full strength once they've put on a little bit more growth. Like at this point, these tomatoes right here that have blooms on them and everything, they're getting full strength fertilizer and it's on my list this week to pot those up into larger containers. And that is it for today's project. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next video.